All right, everyone, get ready, because today we are diving deep into a character analysis that has been keeping me up at night. Liz Headbucks. Oh, yeah, she's a fascinating one. That's an understatement. We've got files upon files about her character profiles, personal notes, even some fictional scenes she pops up in. It's like someone handed us a puzzle box and said, figure her out. And yeah. honestly, I kind of love that. Me too. So <laughs> where do we even start? I guess with the basics, right? Yeah, let's lay the groundwork. Okay, so in Elizabeth Hadbuck's 2023.pdf, it describes her as fitting this vain heroine archetype. Classic. Right. And on the surface, it makes sense. She's young, wealthy, stunningly attractive. The whole package. But with Liz, you just know there's always more than meets the eye. Exactly. And that's where things get interesting, because then you've got Elizabeth Hadbuck's.pdf, which is like someone trying to analyze her from the outside. Trying to crack the code of Liz Hadbucks. Good luck with that. Seriously. And then there's LizGoals.pdf. Oh, that one's a doozy. She straight up says, my goal is to do less work and hold more power. Now, where's the vanity in that? Right. It hints at an ambition that goes way beyond superficial desires. And that's where her magic skills come into play, which I think is super interesting. Okay, yes. Enchantments and transmutation magic, you don't see that every day. Not at all. It's like having a symphony orchestra at your fingertips, but instead of instruments, you've got raw magical power. Okay, for those of us who aren't fluent in magical theory, what's so significant about those two skills specifically? Well, enchantment is all about subtle manipulation persuasion, gently nudging people towards your desired outcome. Transmutation, on the other hand, is about direct transformation, raw power shaping the world around you. So it's like charm versus brute force. In a nutshell, yeah. And Liz has mastered both, which makes you wonder what kind of person seeks to wield that kind of duality. Okay, now my head is spinning. And then there's this other layer. We've got Liz Reflection New Image PDF. Let me guess, she's talking about image again. Yep. But this time, it's different. It's like she's self-aware about crafting this appealing persona, and it's almost like she enjoys the challenge of it. It's like she's saying, I know how this game is played, and I'm going to win. Exactly. So we've got ambition, a carefully crafted public persona, but also hints of something more complex simmering beneath the surface. And that's the million-dollar question, isn't it? What is driving Liz Hatbucks? What does she really want? And honestly, after going through all this, I don't even know where to begin. Well, I think the key lies in her more personal writings. We need to dig deeper into her thoughts on relationships, her creative outlets, those unguarded moments where the real Liz might just peek through. All right, so we're ready to go deeper into who Liz really is. Where should we pick things up? Well, I think we have to delve into her personal files, lizgoals.pdf, lizrelationships.pdf, lizhobbies.pdf, and lizcreative.pdf. These files really give us a glimpse behind the curtain. Okay, let's dive into those. I remember there was something in lizrelationships.pdf that caught my eye about relationships and social norms. Oh, yeah, she said something like, uh, relationships are simple, but our social norms complicate them. And she goes on about, you know, how everyone pretends we're all equal. But deep down, we crave hierarchy, power dynamics, that kind of thing. Right. Like she almost wishes things were more straightforward. Exactly. And that got me thinking about her fascination with, well, what we've been calling the giantess themes. Ah, uh, yes. That adds another layer to it all, doesn't it? For those of us just tuning in, what exactly are giantess themes? It's a fantasy trope focusing on powerful, often dominant women. And what's interesting is gts-explanation.pdf suggests that this isn't just about size. It often connects to a desire for control, for being the one in charge. So Liz's interest in this. Mm -hmm. It's not just a quirky hobby. It speaks to something deeper. Exactly. Remember her comment about craving hierarchy? It makes you wonder if these fantasies are her way of exploring those desires in a sink space. A way to break free from societal expectations, maybe. Possibly. Because she literally says in LizRelationships.pdf that she can't be her true self without being seen as, and I quote, a raging bitch. Wow. So she feels stifled, like she can't be her authentic self. Hmm. It's kind of sad. Actually. It is a bit heartbreaking, and it makes you wonder what experiences led her to believe that being genuine equals being perceived negatively. Right. Like, has she been hurt, betrayed in the past? Did someone make her feel like her true self wasn't good enough? It's definitely possible. But moving on, there's also lizcreative.pdf. Remember how she talks about creativity? Yeah, it's almost like she sees it as a form of manipulation, mm -hmm. getting inside people's heads. Exactly. Which takes on a whole new meaning when you remember how carefully she crafts her own image. Oh, okay. uh, yeah. It's like, is she using her creativity to genuinely express herself? 
or is it just another tool in her arsenal? It's a good question, and I don't think there's an easy answer. It might be a bit of both, to be honest. Maybe that's true for all of us to some extent, right? Maybe. So now that we've gotten a taste of Liz's inner world, I think it's time we explore how she interacts with others. Yes. Let's talk about Kelly. Eh? Liz Kelly, 25.pdf. Liz makes a surprising admission in that one. She actually envies Kelly. Oh, that's right. And not just any envy. She specifically envies Kelly's capacity for kindness, for genuine compassion. Which is so interesting because it suggests that maybe, just maybe, a part of Liz wishes she could embrace those qualities more fully. It's like she recognizes their value even if she struggles to embody them herself. And it makes you wonder about the people Liz surrounds herself with. Has she ever experienced true selfless kindness from someone or has her world always been about transactions and hidden agendas right and if that's the case it explains why someone like kenny completely throws her off guard liz kenny 26 dot pdf right yeah kenny who's basically the definition of a genuinely good guy completely disarms her she's almost suspicious of his motives like she can't fathom the idea of someone doing something nice without expecting anything in return it's kind of sad when you think about it like she's been conditioned to believe that genuine kindness is a weakness and then you've got mac in liz mac 27.pdf remember him totally smitten with liz oh poor mac head over heels and she just sees him as another conquest it's that need for control again that desire to be the one holding all the cards so we've got Kelly, who represents genuine kindness, Kenny, who embodies selfless generosity, and Mac, who's blinded by infatuation. And then there's Devin. Liz and Devin.pdf. Now that is a scene we need to unpack carefully. Okay, Liz and Devin.pdf. Where do we even begin with this one? It's a doozy, that's for sure. Like, on the one hand, you've got Liz clearly enjoying herself, teasing Devin, pushing his buttons just a little. And he's eating it up, isn't he? The guy's got it bad. Totally. And she knows it. It's like she can sense his giantess thing from a mile away. Which, again, makes a question, is she playing into his fantasy because she genuinely enjoys it? Or is it a power play? Right. Like, is she just messing with him? Does she want something from him? It's so hard to tell with Liz. And this is where the ethical lines get blurry, right? Because even if it's consensual, even if they're both into it, there's something about using someone's vulnerabilities like that that feels a little icky. Especially knowing Liz and her track record, we've seen how manipulative she can be. Exactly. But then again, mm -hmm. there's that moment where she admits she might have a crush on him. Wait, really? I totally missed that. It's easy to overlook, but it's there. And it makes you wonder, what if she's not being totally disingenuous? What if there's genuine attraction there, but her need for control, her fear of letting her guard down, it's preventing her from being upfront about it? Okay, now my mind is blown <laughs> because that completely changes things. It's like maybe she's not a heartless manipulator all the time. Exactly. Maybe she craves genuine connection just like the rest of us, but she doesn't know how to go about it without resorting to these tactics. Which, again, makes that line in Bannock Liz 11.pdf so poignant. The one where she admits to not always putting others first. It's like a tiny crack in her armor, a flicker of self-awareness. It's those little cracks that make her such a compelling character, don't they? Because it suggests the potential for growth, for change. So after all this, after keeling back all these layers, can we say for sure who Liz Hadbucks really is? Honestly. I don't think so. And maybe that's the point. Maybe the real takeaway here is that people are complex. We're all a mix of contradictions of light and shadow. And isn't that what makes us human? Absolutely. And it's what makes characters like Liz Hadbuck so fascinating to analyze. So to everyone listening, what resonated with you the most about Liz? What questions are still swirling around in your mind? Because one thing's for sure, this deep dive has given us a lot to think about.